Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Terry's Tennis Tips. Today we're going to talk about the ball machine in you, or if you have a fragile ego, you and the ball machine. We're going to show you how to utilize the ball machine when you're practicing singles, and how to utilize it when you're practicing doubles. You may know a lot of these things, but by watching this tennis tip, you may pick up some help with your doubles and singles on how to practice. And remember, before we get started, remember the most important thing, that only in the sport of tennis does love mean absolutely nothing, except in a successful marriage of two tennis players. All right, we're going to talk about the ball machine today. Now, how many are singles players? One singles player. Okay, everybody come in close here. Come on in close. Singles player. I'll just tell everybody rushes in. Okay. If you practice singles, have you used a ball machine before? Yes. Okay. Come in close. Everybody can see this here. Everybody knows how to operate the ball machine, but in case there's somebody new, you always want, for singles everybody, you want the ball machine in the middle. Because that's where most of your ball is going to come from, from your opponent. Okay. Now, with the control of the ball machine, everybody knows that there's speed, feeding interval, and spin. There's three knobs there. Now, let's talk about the first one, ball frequency. That means how quick your ball is fed after one another. So if we are playing singles and we have a young, well, we have a man over there that's going to be the singles player. We do not want to feed him a ball where the ball's coming so fast that as soon as he hits it, he's got another ball coming on him. You should set this so that when the ball feeds over to that man, he hits it. Allow that ball to hit here before you turn it on to feed the next ball. So in other words, it's like you're playing an opponent. Now, let's just turn this on. There's also a knob in the back, oscillation. How much, how much your ball is, goes out to the side, left, right, middle. You should always start out with the ball down the middle for singles. To start out with. Height, elevation. Mm, to start with, we'll make it like three or four feet over the net, but I don't think enough of you practice you say you have trouble with these high moon balls and stuff. I'll bet you you don't come out on the ball machine and take advantage of that. So it feeds you high balls that make you go back and hit it. Everybody I've ever seen on a ball machine, whether they're practicing singles or doubles, has the ball machine feed you the perfect shot that's right here. Have the ball machine feed you some balls where you have to go back and hit it or you have to run up a little bit and hit it. Same thing you're going to practice in singles and you have trouble with those shots. Now, if this is set right, that young man over there should so he can practice his strokes. All right. Okay, there's one now. Okay, the next ball is not fed till his ball hits over here. And he's going to show us a good ready position after he hits. And he's demonstrating some balls into the net. There we go. There's another one. Okay. Now he's you notice the ball is fed at an interval where the next shot goes out after his ball hits. Okay, show us that good, yeah, show us that good ready position. All right, now that's good to start out warming up. Now, let's see what happens. Okay, now we're cranking the ball up a little bit higher so he can practice off another one, a little bit of slow pace. He's going to play that ball down the middle. Okay, now you notice we've given him a higher ball to practice. Everybody pay attention back there. Connie, were you trying to nod off there on us? or? All right, now let's add so we make the ball go off to the side a little bit. Now he's getting all the shots that he would in a tennis match. Now he's going to the right. Ball lands, another ball is fed. Let's see a drop shot. Let me see a drop shot from back there. Not bad. Now, a good drop shot will land two times in the service box before it passes the service line. That is one. Nope. I want to see a bounce on twice. But I want to see it bounce twice inside the service box for a good drop shot. Okay, now you can see I've cranked it up a little bit higher. Now, let's, let's go a little bit higher so we have... Now, there's the balls that everybody says gives them trouble. They have so much time, it bounces up high. And he's doing a pretty good job of that. Okay, but when you're practicing singles, practice a variation of high balls, low balls, 
So you, you simulate a tennis match. Now, since we've got the singles thing, do you have any questions on the ball machine thing? You, for singles, set it up in the middle. Now, uh, doubles. Let's talk about the doubles. We talked about singles, now let's talk about doubles. The reason we have the ball machine now at an angle, because most of your points come at you in doubles from an angle, cross court. So if you're practicing doubles, it doesn't really make sense to put the ball machine in the middle. We want to try and simulate a point coming from somebody diagonally across from you. So you people that are practicing doubles, put the ball machine up diagonally, hitting cross court now. Now, same rules apply. Practice against high balls, practice against low balls. Now, let me show you something that you can add to it. Let's say that Walt has a, and any of you have a non-playing spouse, and you would like to bring them out or her out. Now, Bonnie, go stand at the net up there. Don't panic. Go stand up at the net as the partner of the ball machine. I want, I want Walt to practice his cross court so he gets a visual, the reason, but you're going to face, face wall. Okay. Now, the reason for this whole practice is, if you're over there hitting against the ball machine yourself, you don't really get a visual of where your return should be to keep away from the net person. Now you actually have a net person to practice, and don't worry about it, this won't hit you. No, it won't. Okay. Now we're going to bring it down a little bit. Now Walt can practice and he has an idea how far he has to keep this over because there's a net person. Very nice. Now you see why we've done this is he can get a kind of an idea of where to hit that ball because there's a net person up there that might pick it off. Now, Bonnie, go get your racket. You have now become a tennis playing spouse. All right, now Bonnie is a tennis playing spouse. And Bonnie, if you see a ball that you want to pick off, pick it off. And I'll tell you what, when you pick it off, get out of the way because there will be another ball coming. Now get up to the net. Don't back up. You are the partner of the ball machine. If you decide, Bonnie, if you decide to go pick up a ball, get out of there and go this way. All right, here is a tennis playing spouse now. That's right, you shouldn't have gone on that one. Oh yeah, I like that. Now you see everybody, that's right. Now Walt took it to the next step. He can practice lobbing. Lob over that net person, Walt. Oh no, he didn't do a good job, Bonnie, put it away. Now you see the values. The person over there not only has an idea of how to hit their return because of somebody at the net, but if he wants to practice his lob, he sees how high he needs to hit it. Everybody understand? Having a partner. This could be your doubles partner. It doesn't have to be your spouse. Most of the time it'll be your doubles partner and not your spouse. All right, we're going to take this another step further. Hold on, Bonnie, you're doing good up there. Now, can you still catch me, Phil? by that second racket in your bag. Should you not have a second racket, you can go to Match Point Tennis Shop and buy a second one. See how I lit into that advertisement? Camera guy. All right. Here we go. Now we have practicing doubles. He can practice his cross court. Oh, that racket guy up there would have got that. Now you have a visual. You have, you have something at the net that you can practice. Boy, that's a lot more topspin than we've seen that guy hit before. All right, let me see a lob over top of that short. Let me see a lob over practice at top of that racket. Yes, but we have a visual on somebody at the net. Very nicely done. I think he came out here to practice. Now, as you see, the next ball is not fed until his ball hits over here. There's a the ball. He will drive that one. It hits, the ball's on its way. All right, now. 
let's change this a little bit. Softer ball, he's got to come in. There's a softer ball. Now he's got to come in. Get in on that net and make that volley after that. Here he comes. His, he's kind of over there. All right. Now, we've given you an idea of little things you can use when you're practicing doubles to help you. This, this young couple right here plays tennis together. So now you two see how one of you can stand over there, simulate the partner, and it's much more closer to competition. Go ahead. We have a question. When would you use this, the spray thing? Okay. Mostly in singles. In other words, there's no sense in me spreading him out right now because... There's only a certain amount of area that a ball, most of the time you'll use the oscillator that spreads the ball out in singles. But that doesn't mean you can't cut the speed down because you notice I was feeding Walt a ball deep, then I cut down the speed which made it land shorter so you can practice that. And see now with this, you get an idea of hitting cross court and lobbing. It's always better if there's another. Now let's say there's three of you. You could have one here and you could have somebody as Walt's partner so if he wants to go over and pick off the ball machine, we can. So there's all kind of things you can utilize the ball machine for. Do we got any questions on the ball machine at all? Have we, have we, you, you probably have already, you've known some of these, but this just gives you a little thing with the practice extras like the racket or a person. All right. And Phil, do we have that wrapped up? The ball machine and you, or with you ego people, you and the ball machine. Now the applause. Now the applause. Yes, yes. Woo! Wow, that was all right. Hi everybody, my name's Terry Gibson, I'm the tennis pro here at Saddlebrook and also a member of the Adidas High Performance Coaching Staff. Uh, I'm here at Saddlebrook on Monday and Thursdays from 8 to 12 in the winter, 7 to 11 in the summer and I'm sitting up under the shelter there. If any of you have any questions about strokes, about uh, fundamentals of doubles or anything, come up and ask me or also I can come down on the court to analyze your games for you. Uh, the purpose of us being here today is we're going to go through a series of tennis tips to help improve your game and make you a better player. Today we're going to cover the ready position from the baseline. Let's start from the ground up. We're going to have our feet about shoulder width apart. We're going to get on the balls of our feet, bend our knees. We want to be leaning forward a little bit. Let's go over that one more time. Feet shoulder width apart. Leaning forward on the balls of your feet, knees bent, racket out in front of you, not close to your body, out in front so you have the freedom of going either way. Now preferably, let's have the racket below your eye level so you have a clear span of watching. If you get it up too high, it's kind of in your way. So right below your eyes, there's a ready position right here. Now here's the reason for this. With my racket being in the middle, I can go to my left for a forehand. I can go to my right for a backhand. I'm right in the middle. After you hit your shot, we're talking about a ground stroke back here at the baseline or a return of serve. After you turn to hit your shot, you go right back to this position. Backhand, you come back to this position. This way you're maintaining your balance and you're ready to go either way. Now here's what I see some of you doing. Some of you are dropping your racket down, which means that you've got to come back up to get ready. This is an extra step. You're here, you're coming up. That's an extra step we don't need. Some of you are standing like this, which means that every time you go to hit a shot, you're off balance. Your hands aren't together. You're not ready. 
This is your ready position. Return a serve, ground stroke. You want the racket out in front, a little bit away from your body. This is your ready position. If you do this, you're going to get more shots in play, and you'll be ready for the shot early. This is what we want to see. Hi, everybody. This is Terry's Tennis Tips, number two in the series. You remember, in step one, we talked about the ready position from the baseline. I'm now at the net. A ready position at the net doesn't change a whole lot. Remember from step one, feet shoulder width apart, knees bent, I'm on the balls of my feet, leaning forward, racket out in front of me below eye level. Same thing we learned in step one. Now here comes the only change. As you approach the net, we want you to use the continental grip. The continental grip is this. Knuckle of your index finger is on the first bevel, off to the side. The reason is when we get a forehand volley, we have our hand behind the racket. When we hit a backhand volley, your hand is behind the racket for more power. So once again, I'm at the net. We're covering the ready position. Feet shoulder width apart. Racket out in front of me. I'm on the balls of my feet with my knees bent. Same exact same ready position as at the baseline except for the grip change. Remember, knuckle on your index finger, your base knuckle, is turned a little bit more to the right so that when you hit a volley you have equal hand behind the racket which gives you a more stable foundation for a volley. So that's it. We're on step number two and we've covered you with both ready positions that's going to make you a better tennis player and improve your game. Hi everybody. Welcome to another episode of Terry's Tennis Tips. This is number three in our series. We're going to talk about the forehand today. It's going to start with that ready position that we, we started in step number one. Let's go over it again. Feet shoulder width apart. Knees bent. Racket out in front of me, but below my eye level. Now we're talking about the forehand. The key is I'm going to get my racket back with my left hand out in front of me. This has to occur before the ball bounces on your side. Now you only have one thing left to do. Step into the ball. Now let's talk about that again. Here's what happens to a lot of you. The ball's coming. You time your racket to go back at the same time the ball's bouncing. And you look like this. Does it look familiar? Well, if it does, here's what I want you to do. When the person hits the ball on the other side and you see it's a forehand, I want you to get into this position. Look at all I have to do now. Turn and step into the ball. Early racket preparation is the key. Whether it's a forehand, backhand, or whatever, right now, forehand. Racket back. Left hand out in front of you. I'm ready for the ball no matter where it bounces. If you're playing on a day where it's windy, I can certainly adjust right now because I'm already ready. So here's the thing to remember. Rack it back before the ball bounces. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode, Terry's Tennis Tips. This is number four in our series. You remember in number three we covered the forehand? We're going to do the backhand today. Let's review something. A good ready position starts everything. Feet shoulder width apart. Knees bent. Racket out in front of me, below eye level. Now, in step number three, we talked about getting the racket back early. Nothing's different here. If you have a two-hand backhand, you're going to turn, and you're going to have your racket back before the ball bounces. 
If you have a one hand backhand, important thing, pull the racket back with your left hand. This turns your shoulders. Let me show you what a lot of you do. You don't use the left hand to pull the racket back. We're talking about the backhand. You don't use your left hand to pull the racket back. You drop it and you end up hitting your backhand one-handed and pushing it. Producing a weak shot or even worse yet, into the net. So remember this on your backhand. Make the left hand pull the racket back. That turns your shoulders and now all you have to do is hit it. But once again, like in step three, the racket has to be back before the ball bounces. I'm going to keep harping on this. Racket back before the ball bounces. This is going to help you become a better player and beat some of those people you've been losing to. We'll see you in the next segment. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Terry's Tennis Tip, trying to make you a better tennis player. What I want to talk about today is the serve. A lot of you have come up to me and said, how can I get more pace on my serve? I want to hit my serve faster. First let's cover more or less the beginning side. A lot of you have what we call the pancake grip. I'm going to show this to you. It's where your hand, the V of my hand, is on the side of the racket with my face down. That's called a pancake grip. So when you go to hit your serve, you're hitting it like that. Now obviously that's limited, but it's a big change if we take you from beginning to advance. But right now I'm talking about the beginner serve. Once again, it's where your hand, the V of your hand, is on the side of your rack. So your service motion kind of looks like this. You're standing almost with your foot facing the net you're throwing your ball up and you're swinging straight ahead. Now, that's very limited because your ball is going to be flat. Your clearance over the net is very small, but if you're stuck with that and you don't want to learn a more advanced serve, here's what will get more pace on your serve. First, you need to get your toss up and out in front of you so you can hit it out in front of you. A lot of you do this. You throw the ball behind you, you lean back and hit it. You don't get your body into it. Notice I'm actually leaning backwards as I hit. Once again, to get more pace on your serve in the beginning grip, if I throw it out in front of me and hit it, I'm going to get more pace. The other thing is you have to almost stand facing the net because if you try and turn sideways, you can't hit this. In a way, I hate to call this beginning. It's called the pancake grip, but a lot of people that didn't learn to serve through lessons automatically pick this grip up. Pancake grip, you want to get more pace on your serve, throw the ball out in front of you. One other thing that will help you, slide your hand down as far as you can go. Some of you are gripping your serve up this high off the end. You can't really snap your wrist. As you notice, this is sticking down below my hand. It catches on my wrist. If I slide my hand down, I now get a lot more leverage. So once again, this is the pancake grip that a lot of people have. Pace on your serve, ball out in front of you, slide your hand down to the end. You're going to hit it out in front. That'll help you get more pace on your serve. Now I want to cover a more advanced type of serve. All right, everybody, we covered what we call the pancake serve. Let's talk about the more advanced serve, which you're going to have your hand in a continental grip. This is the same grip we talked about for the volley in the first few episodes. This is where your knuckle, with the racket pointing straight perpendicular to the ground, your knuckle on your index finger, which we always refer to as the base knuckle, is on the next level down from the top. This is called a continental grip. Same grip you use for your volley. Now here's what difference. First of all, here's what's similar. 
let's slide your hand down to the end. Now when you face the net, remember in the episode we talked about the beginning serve, pancake serve, you were facing the net. Now you're going to turn sideways a little bit more. To get the most out of the serve, the fastest serve, we'd like to have your foot turn completely sideways to the baseline. I don't recommend this right now for 3-0, 3-5, Maybe even 4-0, that's a little extreme, but advanced. The reason the foot is turned completely sideways, when I go back, it allows for extreme shoulder rotation. Just kind of like a baseball pitcher on, a, on the rubber of the pitcher's mound, when he turns sideways, he's ready to release his pitch like this. I'm suggesting this. Let's compromise. Instead of completely sideways, Let's open it up a little bit. A lot of people like to say, let's point my left toe toward the net post. I don't quite like it that far. I like to keep it a little bit to the right of the net post as I'm facing the net. Now, in this pose, we still throw the ball out in front of us. Make sure, let's have our toss, let's have our hand like a platform, the ball out in the end of the fingertips, supported by the thumb. Let me show you that again. The ball is out in the end of my fingertips. I'm going to put my thumb on top. Here's what that allows me to do. As I start my toss and go up, I can release the thumb, and it's like a platform. Notice my arm is straight, too. Some of you do this. You bend your arm. The toss comes in too short. You're going to end up hitting behind you. If I throw my ball up correctly, it should land out in front of me and come down about a foot inside the line. That's ideal for me to hit my serve. It could even be a little farther. But to review this, remember, continental grip on the serve, turn sideways a little bit more than in the pancake grip. Now, I'm ready to go and I'm, I'm going to get more shoulder turn. Shoulder turn is what creates more pace on the serve. One other thing I'd like you to do, make sure you bounce the ball the same number of times. Rituals. If you bounce the ball twice, do it every time, even on your second serve. Here's what else I want to see. Let the air out of your body. So after I bounce twice, I look at my target. I let my air out. If you've ever watched a basketball game and you watch a basketball player go to the free throw line, he is going to bounce the ball. He's going to look at the rim. He lets his air out. That makes sure you're nice and relaxed. If you don't do this, and you don't make an effort to let your air out, you could be breathing in. And that's like holding your breath when you serve, which tightens you up. You're going to be like a robot. You're not going to get any power on your serve. So remember, whatever number of bounces you like, it can be five, it can be three. Mine is three. I look at my target. I let my air out. The other thing it does is it makes you take your time. So when you're serving at 40 love, if you're serving love 40, you're relaxed. You're going to get more serves in with more pace if you let your air out.